I'm honest, I don't remember much about quarantine. Like most people, I felt like I was reliving the same day over and over again. But one day manages to stand out in all that monotony. May 5th, 2021. I remember being in my living room and doing a little dance in my chair, my smile illuminated by my flickering computer screen. Not many high schoolers get excited about school board meetings, and ordinarily I wouldn't either. But this one was special. It marked the culmination of a year's worth of grassroots organizing. At this meeting, the Manhattan Beach School Board approved five new books for the 2021-2022 required English curriculum. And every single one of them was written by a person of color. I am co-president of a group called Diversify Our Narrative MBUSD that acted as student support for the teachers who presented these changes. And as the unanimous vote came in supporting these books, I felt encouraged to believe I could continue to be a positive force for change in my community. As a Miracosta High School student, a senior, yay, <laughs> I had noticed that a lot of the curriculum was not representative of the many cultures that exist in the United States. For example, before 2020, this is what the authors of our required reading looked like for ninth grade, 10th grade, and 11th grade. To explain why this is dangerous, I'm turning to another TED Talk from 2013. Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie is a Nigerian author who gave my favorite TED Talk ever. In her talk, she explains why the single story is detrimental in literature. In her words, it makes our recognition of our equal humanity difficult. The problem is not that the single story or stereotype is wrong, but that it's incomplete. If we see groups of people playing a specific role, we relegate or elevate ourselves to a group and play our part. Listening to her speech again, I realized that this philosophy applied not only to literature, but to any subject in which a limited point of view is shown. So I began my quest to find new perspectives, and about an hour of Google searches later, I found ethnic studies. Ethnic studies is the overarching area of study that includes African American studies, Native American studies, Chicanx and Latinx studies, and Asian American studies. These disciplines highlight the experiences of the underrepresented protagonists of US history. Ethnic studies help students avoid a single story by teaching multiple perspectives of historical events and periods. Considering the United States continues to flourish, thanks to the cultural and intellectual contributions of each and every one of us, leaving out stories is like trying to paint a portrait using only one color. So for me, my school district's approval of these five books is fantastic, but it's just the beginning. My true vision is an academic environment where students challenge themselves to be perspective seekers. That is what teaching ethnic studies will help us accomplish. An introductory lesson would use case studies that reveal the importance of looking at an event or topic from as many perspectives as possible. And the examples are closer than you might think. Take this auditorium, the ground you're sitting on right now. 80 years ago, this space was covered with cherry blossom and camellia trees. It was part of a beautiful group of nurseries spanning 120 acres owned by Japanese immigrants Francis and Kuni Uyamatsu. Students would learn how the Uyamatsu family's internment during World War II led to the city of Manhattan Beach acquiring this land after the family was forced to sell it to maintain their financial stabilities. This monument is in the quad outside at the expo, for if you'd like to see it. Closer than you might think, right? Just a few miles away is Bruce's Beach, another potential topic. 
students would have access to materials that would help them understand the historical case from the eyes of the Bruce family and other Manhattan Beach residents at the time. They would also discuss how, a hundred years later, Bruce's Beach is in the news once more, as city, state, and national figures reassess the events. Exercises like these inspire students to draw connections between past and current events. And by shifting students' frames of reference like this, we open up classroom discussions to healthy and productive controversies. My family is a melting pot of dissenting opinions and outlooks on life. And let me tell you, all of them come out at the dinner table. <laughs> What starts as a conversation about our day quickly becomes a full-on debate about the news, ethics, race, sexual orientation, or politics. It gets tricky at times, but the beauty of having these talks is the controversy. It's where I learn how to respectfully disagree. As a family, we shamelessly express our opinions and encourage each other to ask thoughtful questions and never take things at face value. This has played a significant role in my passion for diversifying curriculum because the space we've created allows me to learn new information about a topic that changes my mind or reaffirms my stance even more in a productive setting. This is the opportunity I wish for every high school student and I'm excited to see the necessary pieces beginning to fall into place. Students, parents, and teachers are tirelessly campaigning for a diverse curriculum in their communities across the country. As a result, the California Senate has successfully passed a model curriculum for an ethnic studies course. Yay! <laughs> and, oh, go ahead. <laughs> it gets better. As of October 8th, 2021, California became the first state to make ethnic studies a high school graduation requirement. There are also a growing number of special certifications and grants offered to schools that promote and demonstrate efforts toward diversity in both their student body and their curriculum. In 2020, a district-wide survey was given by the Manhattan Beach Panel for Equity, a community organization of over 600 alumni, parents, and teachers that we worked with at the beginning of our journey. It asked teachers if they felt they had the language and training to address discrimination or discussions of inequality on campus. Less than half of them gave a definitive yes answer. 100% of teachers surveyed stated that it would be helpful if the district provided further training and resources dedicated to inclusive and equitable education reform. We then polled the students, asking if some school subjects displayed certain groups in a discriminatory or problematic nature. 30% of students listed history, around 20% said English, and Model United Nations Sports and the Arts tied for third at around 10% each. This data shows an opportunity to improve our education system, and our district has always prided itself on being innovative in preparing students for the next level. Let's rise to this new challenge of creating a more inclusive environment one step at a time. We're a beach town. We should ride the wave of progress. <laughs> Not that it hasn't arrived already. A faculty member nominated me for this opportunity, and our new superintendent's former district is actively exploring ethnic studies as an option for its students. If every student could have their own version of my dining room table, a place to listen to new perspectives, share ideas, respect differences, and always be looking to expand their single stories into an entire book of perspectives, we could eliminate the stigma that comes with being other in this country. So when the student in me listens to Chimamanda's call for us to recognize our inherent similarities, I find myself wanting to add that our differences are what make this world so beautiful. 
we should challenge ourselves to acknowledge and understand the various perspectives we encounter. But I want us to go deeper, expanding our minds to be able to see the value in every story, because those stories are the key to helping our students thrive in a world with a thousand vibrant, wonderful colors and perspectives in it. Thank you. Thank you.